Okay, the, the network had blocked me out. So uh, like I was saying, I was saying, when it comes to urinalysis, your station is going to be a clean uh, station, just the way it is looking like this, that's how your, your instruments will be arranged as well. So you just have a receiver for some clean gloves, as well as uh, the mouth stick bottles, or just one mouth stick bottle with some urinalysis sticks. You're going to have a pipette as well as a, a test tube and some urine, but except you're not going to be given actual urine. So like this is not actual urine, it's just something made to look like urine. And also during OSC, that is what most is done. But then most during OSC, what guides you as to what you're expected to find positive is the scenario because it is in rare cases that they will use actual urine for you to do urinalysis on, on someone's actual urine because certain individual may contaminate or may touch the urine as they are doing the procedure, meaning it may cause contamination. But then when it comes to OSC for urinalysis, you need to understand that you're checking for two major things, which are the physical properties as well as the biochemical properties. So when it comes to the physical properties, you check physical properties like the color of urine, the amount of urine that you have been given. Apart from the amount, you also check for any presence of physical particles in urine. For example, are you able to see presence of blood? Are you able to see maybe presence of pus or any other physical property that you can visibly see? So you're checking for any physical property and also the smell. So the other thing that you also need to get is the smell. Then apart from those things, then you need to check for the biochemical properties, which are these things which are found on the urinalysis bottle. So you find that on the urinalysis bottle, you need to check for biochemical properties such as the glucose. And the glucose is the one you check first because it is down, down there. So you check from uh, bottom coming in, up as you are using this particular urinalysis mouth sticky bottle. So you start from glucose, then from glucose, you check for bilirubin, ketones, specific gravity, blood, pH, proteins, uh, urobilinogen, nitrate, as well as the leukocyte, which is always checked the last because you check leukocytes after two minutes. So mostly, like I said, they won't give you actual urine, but they may give you something looking like uh, urine. So in this particular case, you find that maybe the scenario will say, this is Mr. Uh, or Mr. Z who has been brought to your, uh, <clears throat> to your lab for urinalysis or to your medical ward with suspected the uh, lesser renal failure and you have been tasked to do urinalysis. So you find that because they have said renal failure, you may expect to have a low volume of full urine as you do urinalysis. But maybe the scenario says Mr. X has been admitted for diabetes, meaning as you do your urinalysis, you already know to say, oh, what should come out positive in diabetes is glucose. The rest are going to be negative, but then glucose, you should mention it as positive because they will not give you actual urine where uh, sugar or glucose will come out eh, positive. Sometimes the scenarios say this is uh, a patient who has uh, preeclampsia, meaning hypertension in pregnancy. So for when you're doing urinalysis for preeclampsia, you find that you need to mention that proteins are positive because once you see positive proteins in uh, urine in a woman who's pregnant, it indicates hypertension in it pregnancy. So if the scenario says you are doing urinalysis on a patient who has preeclampsia, meaning you should be expected to mention um, uh, proteins as being positive. Sometimes the scenarios may say this patient has a suspected liver failure, for example, liver cirrhosis, where there is a severe inflammation of the liver tissue. So in those particular cases, again, <clears throat> you will find that you may be expected to mention as urobilinogen being pr present in urine. Apart from that, also bilirubin can also come out 
positive because of uh, the damage to the liver, which cannot properly conjugate and excrete the urobin. Therefore, you see that urobilinogen as well as proteins may come out positive. Then, uh, so these are some of the things that they may ask you to do, but then they, they won't give you urine where the test will come out positive in that particular manner. So it's more like you imagine based on how the scenario has been phrased. Okay, so now let's say the scenario reads, <clears throat> Mr. Z has been brought to your screening room uh, or to your medical ward with suspected, uh, uh, with suspected diabetes. Task perform urinalysis to confirm the diagnosis. So in this particular case, uh, you are going to, okay, so in this particular case, you are going to, as usual, sanitize. Once you read the scenario, you sanitize. And after sanitizing, you go to the patient to get permission. So in this particular case, the scenario becomes your patient. So you're going to face the scenario and get permission from the patient. So you will say, uh, Mr. Z, I'm a student uh, number 852. I've been assigned to perform urinalysis so that we can confirm the diagnosis of diabetes, which was made earlier. Can I go ahead? Anything I can do for you around here before I proceed? Thank you. I'll be back to tell you my findings. So after you get permission in that manner, you sanitize. Then after you sanitize, you even come to your station like this one. So once you come to your station, you'll find that there's going to be two receivers or kidney dishes. One, you need to pour 0.5% chlorine for immediate decontamination of these instruments after you use them. So you just get uh, a, a bottle labeled chlorine and you're going to pour it on one of the uh, receivers like that. Then the other one is just left in that particular manner. So this one is also going to have a tissue. So it will have a small tissue where you can you use to rub the back of the uh, of the of the mouth stick after you dip it in urine. Then the other one you pour chlorine. Then from there you can now don in the examination gloves. <clears throat> so once you don in the examination gloves, the first thing that you're going to start with is to assess the physical properties before you go to the biochemical properties. So on the physical properties, the first thing you'll start with is to mention the volume of urine. So you place the graduated jug with urine on a flat surface and say uh, the amount of urine is, uh, in this particular case, this has 150 mils. So the amount of urine is 150 mils, which is normal. From there, you go on to smell the urine. So you need to smell the urine and get the smell of urine. So you're going to say, okay, the smell, the urine has an acetone smell. So if you're uh, examining urine for a diabetic patient, the urine is going to have an acetone smell. And an acetone smell, it looks like when someone has not eaten anything this morning and you're speaking to them close by, you feel like they ate a flavored sweet, but then it doesn't feel like a flavored sweet and it irritates your nostrils a bit. That is an acetone smell coming from the breakdown of uh, fats. So for smell in diabetes, you're going to say the urine has an acetone smell. Then if it is just routine urinalysis, there's no problem mentioned in the scenario. The normal uh, smell of urine, it should have a smell of uh, uh, aromatic. So aromatic is a normal smell of urine that you should get, but in diabetes, we are saying the smell is, uh, it has an acetone smell. So after feeding or for the smell of urine, you are now going to transfer the urine from the uh, graduated jug into the uh, test tube there. So you get urine using a pipette and drop it into the test tube in that manner until you feel it. Okay. The reason is because they are certain. So once you feel it, this uh, pipette goes direct into 0.5% chlorine in that manner. 
The reason you transfer urine there is because you need to finish up with other physical properties like the color, as well as any presence of any physical properties of which you can only check it in this particular uh, test tube and you take it on a white surface. So you find that where you are doing urinalysis from, they will stick a plain paper on the wall, meaning that you take this particular urine on a white surface, or if there's no, they have not stuck a plain paper on the wall, just get a plain paper, which will be on your station and press it behind the test tube so that you can observe any physical properties. So in this particular case, we are going to say the color of urine is clear amber, but looks concentrated. So you find that in <clears throat> diabetes, the normal color of urine is supposed to be clear amber, but in diabetes, it, it is the most concentrated. Uh, so that you are just going to say the normal, the color is clear amber, however it looks uh, concentrated. There's no presence of pus that I can see or blood that I can see or any other physical properties like uh, stones. Uh, apart from that, no other abnormality that I can see from the urine. Then you take the urine back on the rug. So at this point means you have observed the physical properties, then you can move to the biochemical properties. So at this point now, you are going to remove a glove of your dominant hand. So if you are left-handed, you will remove a left-hand glove. If you are right-handed like me, then you remove a glove of your right hand and then you discard the glove. So you find that on your station again, <clears throat> you are going to have a plain paper, which you are going to use for recording the findings. This is the reason why you remove a glove of your dominant hand, because there's a point when you need to document. So if, you're, if both hands are still gloves, meaning it will be hard for you to document, that's why you remove a glove of your dominant hand. So when you remove the glove of your dominant hand, you're going to pick the mouth stick bottle and open it like that. And then you pick, you do like that, and then you pick one stick from there. So you're going to pick a stick in that manner, except they are flipped. So you pick a stick, once you pick, you pick the stick with the gloved hand. And then once you pick the stick, you can even compare whether the color codes on the mouth stick are matching the color codes on the mouth stick bottle. So you are going to say, okay, the color codes match and this mouth stick bottle is expiring in 2024, it's potent for use. Then you even dip the mouth stick in urine just for two to three seconds. So after dipping it for two to three seconds, then you are going to wipe the back of the, of the stick on the tissue that is provided on the other receiver. So you just wipe the stick like that to remove the excess urine. Then from there, you start now comparing whether the color codes are changing or not. And for the mouth stick bottle here, it is saying you start from the bottom as you continue going up. So we start from here, then we are moving up, comparing whether the colors are changing. So in this case, the first thing that is down here is glucose. We are going to compare, so I'm going to say, okay, glucose is positive. And uh, when we say positive, there's a number against each positive sign. So you, you, when documenting, you pick that particular number where a plus is. So you pick any number because the, the scenario said this patient is diabetic. So we want to confirm the diagnosis. So we'll pick, okay, uh, you, uh, glucose is positive. Then from there, you continue moving up. The next one is bilirubin. Bilirubin is negative. Then you move to ketones. Okay, ketones are positive. You find that also the, what gives that acetone smell is because of breakdown of fats. And uh, fats, when they are broken down, the end product is a ketone body. That's why also in DM, you find that ketone bodies are going to come out here positive. Then you move to specific gravity. Okay, specific gravity is high. So you'll find again that in, in uh, diabetes, the specific gravity in normal urine is supposed to be 1.00. But in diabetes, because the urine is highly concentrated, the heaviness of urine increases, which is the specific 
gravity. So you're going to get, say the specific gravity is high, then your blood is negative, uh, pH is normal, proteins are negative, uh, urobilinogen negative, nitrite negative. I will therefore check for leukocytes after two minutes. Then you even place the stick on the tissue like that and you get the pen and document because leukocytes, you can only check them after two minutes. So as you are waiting for two min minutes, you're even documenting to say, oh, the volume was, uh, volume was 150 mils. Then from there, you say smell <clears throat> acetone. Then from there, you move on to other things like the color, uh, clear amber, but concentrated. Then you talk about no other physical properties like blood or pus. Then from there, you even just record the one which has changed. You say, oh, glucose positive. Then uh, apart from that, you're going to say ketones also positive because those two have seen them to be positive. And then the specific gravity, you, you pick any number above one. So when we say high, you can pick even uh, 1.010. It means it is above normal because the normal should just be 1.00. So when you say specific gravity, you even record 1.010. So by the time you're finishing recording, meaning it's, it would have been already two minutes, you just pick the mouth stick bottle and the, the stick and check, okay, and you say leukocytes are negative as the mouth stick bottle has not, uh, the mouth stick rather has not changed its color. So at this point, you're even done with the urinalysis. So you're going to discard this in the waste bin and then you get the urine here, which is in the test tube. You take it back in the urinalysis uh graduated jug and then this you you discard it in chlorine then from there you can now remove this glove and discard and then you get the sanitizer you sanitize or you wash your hands then from there you come to the patient to say mr z we were checking for uh for diabetes to see if it is present and so far with our investigations the urinalysis that i've done um, glucose has come out positive, ketones are also positive, and the specific gravity is high, and this may indicate that you are diabetic. So Mr. X, thank you so much for allowing me to do the procedure. However, I will still uh, refer you to a physician or will still do more investigations, and then we'll also give you suitable drugs that you can take as we do more investigation to determine the type of diabetes that you have. Thank you so much. We'll see you some. I will see you soon uh, to do more investigations. Then you even sanitize and say I'll document and report the findings. So for urinalysis, that is all about uh, urinalysis. And we took an example of uh, diabetes as an example that we can do for urinalysis. Unless there's a question. <clears throat>